Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Well, autumn is now well and truly upon us and uh, I assume everybody in the Northern Hemisphere is in the same boat. Um, lucky you in the Southern Hemisphere who have now got spring, but uh, I suppose autumn would eventually turn up down there too. Um, today I'm going to therefore draw and paint or at least paint a uh, sort of autumn scene and I have in mind a fox and I realized a little while ago that I haven't ever done a um, tutorial of a fox although I have actually painted them in the past so I've been doing a lot of research today and I've been painting bits and pieces um, and all sorts of practice stuff Ah oh dear, it's such a hard life being a creator. We suffer so much. Oh dear. Um, yes, anyway, just joking, not at all. It's the best job in the world. So what I'm going to do now is talk about the paints, which is the first thing to do and the paper. I'm gonna, today, I'm going to treat myself and use a piece of arches, 140 pound cotton, watercolor, paper, um, the thing I normally don't use. I don't know why, I just feel like it today. No idea. Shouldn't do, really, because Arches is, you know, only meant for people who can really paint, you know, like certain other creators who are really, really good. Um, but I'm not like that. Anyway, uh, why am I saying this? Because I need to warm up. It's cold. Um, so that's it. I'm going to use a piece of Arches, but you can easily instead use other things. And one thing I recommend, hang on is not to have your shelf fall on you. Recommend this. In fact, I might even use this. Why should I waste my good paper? Um, Claire Fontaine, European company, made in Europe. I think they're mainly owned by a Scandinavian company now, so they're ethical. Um, don't chop down too many trees. A lot of it, I'm sure, is totally recycled. Claire Fontaine, big company. They actually own arches, actually. should mention that. Been meaning to mention that for ages. They own <coughs> the Arch, Arch factory now. I should say Arch. Since I live in France, I should say Arch. Shouldn't I? Um, I do believe that is true. <coughs> and um, so this is good paper. It is good paper. It is European and it's good. And I use it a lot. So maybe I will today. Break out a sheet of Etival, which is about 50 cents a sheet. And um, you can't really go far wrong with that, can you? Or you could use Etcher or Bockingford. Here's Bockingford. This is good. I like this. Ron Ranson used to like this. Ron Ranson, who um, has stimulated many people into painting with big brushes, like this one, the Ron Ranson Hake. Everyone should have one. I gave mine a haircut because it didn't seem to work, it didn't make it any better. So eventually I bought a new one. Uh, I use it occasionally. I don't think I'll use it today though. Anyway, going off to the track, the other piece of um, paper that you could use. I should have got this all out before I started, shouldn't I? Please forgive me. Etcha watercolour block. This is how you spell block, P-A-D. It's a block because it's glued all the way around, except in the corner here, where you can insert, should you wish to do so, once you've done your painting. This is for serious painters. This is cotton too, I believe, although I can't say who made it. Uh, so anyway, you slide your letter opener in there, like that, and then you go around just separate it like that, just like that, just like that, just like that, it's annoying. So, I'm not gonna use that today. Uh, I'm going to use my 
Kuretake set and I have gone up a notch in how I'm using it now because I've started to get familiar with the paints as they come out of the little pots, not pots, pans, not pans. What, what would you call one of these? Uh, container, let's call it a container. So what I have been doing up until now is I have been taking paint from there and like all good five-year-olds, just putting it straight onto the paper. And that's fine because there's so many different colors here. You can just go along and vary it and, and, and you know, this paper, by the way, is completely unsized and you can see that because where I've just painted, you see all those little dots? That's not granulation. That's where the paint has gone straight into the paper and sunk in more in some parts than in others um, because it has no, it's old. This is a piece of paper that's been hanging around in my studio for probably about 30 years and the sizing has gone. That does happen, you know, that does happen to paper. So if you have, use it. <laughs> or lose it. I've got loads of sheets of paper here that I will never be able to use because I've just kept it too long. I don't want to use it. I don't want to break into that, I say stupidly. And then what happens? You lose all the sizing and you can't lift that anymore. If you're using a decent piece of paper, you can go in and you can lift it by doing this. But look, see, you could do that until the cows came home and uh, nothing would ever lift. So you can't paint on this, but you can draw on it, so it's okay for sketching. Uh, anyway, so that's what I had been doing, but then I decided it was time to elevate myself. Um, so I've got my nice white tray here, it used to be white, and I put my pans on here, and you could just take out the ones you were going to use and put them there, and then you can pick up some paint and you can either put it down here and do what I normally do, which is to just blend on plus, so to speak, like that. And then you can pick up something else and you make a nice gray. And that's the way I'm going to do it today, I think. You can also, if you don't have a butcher's tray, you can use one of these little doobries and you just, you know, collect some paint from your box, bung it in there, and then you can mix until your, to your heart's content, you see? Hopefully I'm making it clear what I mean. So then you, you just pick up a bit more of a different color, bung it in there, a bit more of that, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, that's how you use these. I kind of think of that as being the way I normally um, paint with my tube paints where I put the two paints around the outside and I mix in the middle. So this I'm going to do something similar. The, the Kuretakis are there and I'll be mixing over here. That's the idea. I'm going to use a, <clears throat> a size uh, 12, I think 11 or 12 um, draw well brush. And if you want to buy Japanese brushes very inexpensively from a nice man in Japan, direct cut out the middle man, very inexpensive. The information about how to go about doing that is in the description below this video <clears throat> and he also has these ones which have nice black um, handle and um, these are called Maestro and they're a little bit very little bit more expensive but significantly better quality these ones are really really good workhorses I use them all the time look quite a few in there I don't know why I think he keeps sending them to me for free but um, that's okay. They don't really wear out though, if you're careful with them. So the colors I'm going to use for this are going to be uh, Burnt Sienna. Most of you will have Burnt Sienna in your set. Um, I'm going to use this color beige for the moon. You could use Naples Yellow for that instead. Um, the rabbit is gonna be done in gray. You could use, if you haven't got this kind of gray, you could use Payne's gray or just dilute down some black. I'm going to do the sky in indigo, or you could use phthalo blue if you haven't got indigo in your set. Um, the owl is going to be done in a sort of beige. That would be <coughs> raw, raw sienna or yellow ochre. And he's going to have specks on him of a dark brown, which would be something like burnt, um, <coughs> uh, burnt umber. Uh, or um, burnt umber would be in most people's sets. 
Um, the leaves I'm going to do in orange, this is the orange here and cadmium orange. You could use cadmium orange too. I'm sure that will be in most of your sets, plus a few other odds and ends and bits and pieces and dips and drips and drabs and bits and bobs and doodahs and so on as you go on. And I'm just clearing up here a little bit to make space to put my paints there. Is that the paper I'm going to use? Yes, I think so. I decided in the end, didn't I, to use, to use this. Now, if you want to watch me drawing this, you'll have to um, become a member and go over to Patreon and sign up. You can pay £2 a month and you'll get extra videos over there. And this will be one of them. I'm going to draw the design on here because this video otherwise would be way too long. Um, you can also join on YouTube if you don't want to go to Patreon. So you just join here for, I think it's $2.99 a month. And you get these extra videos and other bits and pieces which you can explore to your heart's content. If you just go and have a look at the information about membership, that would be wonderful. I would really appreciate your joining. Right, I'll be back in a minute when I've drawn it. Okay, so here I have my sketch, which I've just done over on Patreon or um, on the membership uh, section of the channel. So if you're a member, you'll have been able to take a look at that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to paint the sky first. I'm going to do the sky and then I'm going to have to let it dry because... Um, I just need a slightly smaller brush for a second. What did I do with it? There it is. Um, because otherwise we'll get too much running. So no, that's not any good either. Let's try this one. You need a brush that has a reasonably decent point. <laughs> I'm not succeeding. And I'm going to just wet the sky around the moon reasonably carefully, although we will be able to correct any... Uh, missteps with a little bit of gouache, otherwise known as thick paint. And the leaves don't have to be super accurately done, but we do want to paint around them a little bit. You could mask them out with masking fluid if you wanted to. That's another thing you could do. Um, I'm not going to do that. I don't like masking fluid very much because it usually rips the paper for me. I think I'm just too cack-handed. Okay, so the indigo is, which one is it? It's the fifth one. Hold on, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's this one. I'm going to do what I said, which is one, two, three, four, five. Pick up some indigo and stick it down here so you can see it. Okay, so fair amount of that and then just that's my joy of the day dropping paint and this uh, kuretake paint is very good at doing that <laughs> and it spreads out beautifully and if you've already wetted your paper beforehand like I did it helps, just helps spread it. And the paint won't, won't very readily go into the parts that aren't wet. So if you had bothered really carefully to do this, it would be much easier. Now, you know, purists would say, oh, you're going to get runbacks and all sorts of things going on in the sky. But have, has anyone looked at the sky lately? Well, it's so full of satellites. <laughs> it doesn't look what it used to. It's full of, full of, full of stuff. Um, anyway, so it doesn't matter if you get a few runbacks. It just adds character, doesn't it? The pleasure of painting 
watercolour is in the process, I think. And if you get a lovely painting at the end of it, which you often do, you do, I've seen some of them, uh, then so even better. But it's not about perfection and it's not about panicking to get it right. No. That's my job. <laughs> okay, so there we are. We've gone round the moon, gone round most of the little... Um, leaves and I just shove in a bit more there, make it a bit darker over this side. So there's a bit of variation. Okay, and uh, just make sure this is recording. Okay, so then we want another shade of green, blue, something pretty. Let's not do anything too realistic. Because at night, colours change, don't they? So we'll just drop in some different shades of green and grey here. Why not? Whatever you think of first. And then um, we want to vary that a bit, so, but not too much. Um, Nice turquoise. I didn't mention using that, but you can, I mean, you can paint your fields brown if you want. Doesn't matter. So that lot needs to dry before I can do the house and the leaves and the owl. Uh, so I'll let that sit and maybe we'll come down here and have a go at the fox. And I'm going to try and find a slightly better brush. That one's a little bit worn. This is a size 7. Let me make myself some space. Now I'm going to pick up um, for the fox. He's going to be um, this colour, which is burnt sienna. Yeah. Let's see, Anna. Pick some up, put it there. And then, as I said, we'll paint the top half of his head in this brown. And we paint his ears as well. And then we'll come back, though, with some black for the tops of his ears. And then we'll do... This is nice paper to paint on, this is. It doesn't... Give you trauma and don't forget this is not this is not a realistic fox you will have noticed this is a whimsical fox whimsical so we paint his legs down like that about three quarters of the way and his back leg and we'll come back to those in a minute and then we're going to just flick with the brush up there like that. Leave the tip because the tip is usually uh, white, isn't it? And then we'll just grab some black. Or even maybe just, we won't grab it, perhaps we'll just pick it up and finish off his feet because foxes tend to have feet that are on the blackish side. And then put some dark colour in here as well. Maybe a little bit round there. And then don't forget his ears and just let that run. And his nose, of course. So that's how we're going to do him. And then I'm going to pick up some light grey for the tip of his tail, just drop that in. And when that's dry, I'll drop in some, um, some little shadowy bits. 
Let me just do that as well there. I don't want to touch it too much. I don't want it to run too much, but it can run a little bit. Just soften that. A little bit of shadow there. Smooth that out a bit and hopefully that won't be too irregular. A little bit there. Just give him a bit more texture in his tail. When that's dry, I'll probably um, do a glaze in orange <clears throat> just to give him more burning colour. Okay, so now we have his wife over here. I'm going to start with her ears. Just do the same thing. I think it's a, it's a bit of a, a trick, but it just gives that foxy look without worrying and panicking and Oh my goodness, it's, yeah, I'm going to get this wrong, I'm going to get this wrong. Just don't worry about it, just do it like this. And everyone knows it's a fox. And meanwhile, we're drying up the top there. And she's got her legs here. And her back leg. So I put a little bit more brown in there. And then she's got a nice tail too. Just give it a nice flicky thingy going on there. And we want some grey for the tip. And Bunny is also going to be grey, so we can carry on with that grey. Perhaps mix a little bit of brown in to give him a bit of variety, or her. Keep that a bit rough around his tail. We can do that white later. There's his ears, and we can put a nose in later if you want a nose. And we mustn't forget the paint her beige bit here. And then when it's dry, we'll put the features in. But for, um, for now, we can just pop in the nose if I can pick up some black. And her ears. Probably do her eye, their eyes with a, a fine liner or something like that. Now, is this dry? Yes, it is. So we can do the roof. Um, inclined to think a reddish, brownish colour for the roof, perhaps something like this. Because slate, I always think, oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, foreigners. <laughs> Thinking slate because I'm in France and, of course, in England too, country cottages tend to have slate roofs. So that I could have done it red. Sometimes I do it red. Thinking of Canadian red tin roofed houses. But anyway, you have to take no notice of my ramblings, which are nothing but... Ramblings of a lunatic. Uh, so the building itself wants to be quite dark. So I'm picking up some black. Maybe we'll mix that with a little bit of burnt sienna to make a dark brown. The building wants to be quite dark because we want the windows to be nice and light. So we're just painting the house. Like that, and we'll put yellow lights in the windows in a minute. And we could put a bush or something in here. Something, I don't know, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. 
The next thing has to be the field that's closer. So we really want a, a dark green like this. And that was burnt sienna with the green which calls itself forest green. Now we have to paint around the sheep. Like I said, don't worry about runbacks and blotches because, you know, we're going to probably embellish this with some line work or something like that, aren't we? So it really doesn't matter. We just go around those sheep. And the sheep can be finished off with um, white gouache. So that was that colour, wasn't it? Yeah. Was it that one? So we're just doing the background. What shall I talk about? Mixing a sludgy green with two shades, <coughs> burnt sienna and for forest green, I think it is. Going. I'm looking forward to the snow. We can paint snow scenes where we don't have to actually do any background. We don't have to do a nighttime dark, gra dark green grass. That would be nice, won't it? Much easier to paint snow because you don't have to paint anything, do you? We might put some more sheep in on top of the grass. You can always paint them in white gouache. Okay, and then down here in the front, in the foreground, we're going to just put bright orange. And we have orange, cadmium orange. This is a representation of autumn leaves and a bit more of the burnt sienna as well just splosh 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 autumn leaves on the ground around my foxes Take some cadmium yellow as well and just fill that all in. Have fun. At this point we will see that 
your lady fox needs more information on her tail. So we'll just do that and then a little bit more black in her leg. Because the paint dries much lighter. Don't lose faith. I know it looks a bit messy at the moment, but we will pull it all together at the end. I hope. Yellow leaves on the trees, well, on the branch. Drop in some one colour, then drop in a bit more of another colour and let it blend. And we probably want to make the branch a little bit darker. Don't worry about details. Some more yellow here. A bit more brown. Just drop it in. Don't forget to make the branch go across the moon. And we'll probably come in with some pen afterwards. And the question is, are we going to make the moon, do the moon first or are we going to do the owl? And I think we'll do the owl. Let's paint him in a sort of beige colour. So let that dry now and then we can put some details on there and uh, while we're thinking about glowing colours let's put some light in the house. We might want to darken the actual house itself to make that stand out more. And we want perhaps a black chimney stack. There we are. And let's, yes, let's make the moon a nice, bright, shiny colour. We could paint it gold, I suppose. Oh no, I don't like that. That looks like a dirty, sludgy yellow. I don't like that at all. Get rid of that. This time of year the moon seems very, very big when it comes over the horizon. Harvest moon we tend to call it. I think. And I think that we'll need some white for the face of the owl. Up some of this white. And for the body, just give it a bit of contrast. 
probably should rub out that line. I might have to break into some really strong white gouache, some of these white parts, and for the sheep. So I'm going to just stop for a second and find, find my gouache. So now I'm coming in with my fine liner. This is a Micron Pigma Micron 0.3. And we're just going to start adding features now. So we've got lots of nice little um, uh, flicky V things on there and then some splashes on there. And uh, so we'll just go around the oak leaves, I think, and put the veins in. If you're a better painter than me, you don't need to do this. If you can make things look realistic with just the colour, but I think it's actually really hard, so I've never been that confident in that myself, so... Often, I will come in and put line in to make it seem more finished. Perhaps we'll go around the outside edge of the moon as well because <clears throat> if you only do some of it some of your painting with line it might seem a little bit wrong not sure if I've got the face of that quite right but I uh, have to do for now Okay, so round the roof of the house with the pen, you could put, you might want to put a little bit of extra shadow under the eaves, maybe. So just come in with a line of black. Depends how realistic you want it to look. In my case, not very. Put a little bit more shadow on that side of the house, perhaps. You could put in some effect of some stone, but the best thing, I think, is to draw around the windows. Oh. And doors. With a pen. about sheep is that they their um, their bodies come up really high on their heads so sort of it's hard to describe so their heads like that their ears and then it took me a long time to realise why my sheep didn't look right. And it's because I was making the, the back down here, but it has to come up the top of the head. And their eyes are very high in their heads too. And some of them have got black heads and some of them have got white heads. You could have black ears if you want, to make them look obvious. Some of them have horns. Um, okay, so let's give the fox the foxes their eyes and their mouth. Oh, 
point up the ears a bit. fox and then the rabbit. And Mrs. Fox. Might want a little white dot in there the eye, perhaps. And her tail is down here, isn't it? So I'm going to grab some white. This is uh, bleed proof white. I think this will probably work. And uh, just mix it up a little bit and kind of brighten up her end of her tail and Mr. Fox as well. Some white in there, put a bit more white under there. There. And here. And we haven't actually even painted the sheep, so just give them some colour, non-colour. You can often correct little mistakes with this stuff. In fact, you can do more than just correct mistakes. You can actually um, uh, put in details that you couldn't otherwise achieve. in some smoke coming out of the chimney. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry and uh, see what we're going to do next. Okay, I'm just popping in a little bit of uh, shadow underneath, especially underneath her tail there, just to show where the tail begins and ends. Um, maybe a little bit of shadow under the rabbit as well, perhaps. Um, maybe under the sheep too, because they cast shadows, don't they? And that sort of makes me think, oh, we should probably come in and um, just give a little bit more, uh, make it a little bit more convincing. All sorts of things you could do. You could carry on here forever, I think. A little bit like the, um, put some black and then we can put in the fence. Gives a little bit more perspective. All sorts of things that you can do just to play with it. We could um, paint some flowers. 
but I don't know. I'm not going to because I think flowers are not really winter, uh, not really autumn, are they? So we'll stick with the autumn theme. And maybe what I'll do is perhaps bring in another branch here. From the side. And uh, I mean, you could um, you could put a bird. Perhaps we'll put a bird. Brown bird. Like that. Put another one. Yeah. I was going to put leaves, but I decided to make them into birds. So we put a beak, feet, tail. No better than that. Ugh. It's so easy to ruin those. I could, I don't know, maybe I'll make them a darker colour. Just a sec. Correction, correction. This is going to be a Crow. Family of crows, two crows. because they're wintry, aren't they? So, I think we're getting there. Um, maybe a few bare stems with perhaps The odd dead leaf. Up there. A little bit of grass, grasses. another bush with some not very healthy looking because it's winter autumn maybe just a little bit of life up there to cheer it up a bit some nice orange the orange actually looks quite good on the green doesn't it I think we're done. I think I'm going to call that a day. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And I think it was quite a long one. So hopefully you didn't get bored halfway through. Um, if you did enjoy it, give us a like and subscribe and turn on notifications. And also consider joining our Patreon or our YouTube membership for extra goodies. So I'll see you again soon with uh, something else unexpected. And uh, yeah, have a lovely weekend, everybody. Bye for now. Bye-bye.